Oh, here's one of the flower pots. This is quite the friggin' spectacle here. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Coming from three days in Lonely Island to this. It's people love the flower pot. Okay, Rich, let's get out here. We left Tobermory about half an hour ago, and I decided to rig up the sail because for the first time in about a month, <laughs> there seemed to be a bit of a favorable wind in the proper direction. So we seem to be scooting along pretty well. The sail rig's working good. I mean, it's just like the perfect amount of breeze for it. We're going along about six or seven kilometers an hour. Yeah, it was kind of tired out today and uh, not looking forward to this big long paddle in this last 30 kilometers, but now that this thing's pulling us along, that's kind of a whole different story. Hopefully it keeps going well. It seems to be. It's holding up well. Just. Finally, the wind's in a good direction for this thing. Shoreline along the Bruce Peninsula is pretty inhospitable for boat landings, that's for sure. So even though we were sailing along really nice and making some good time, I saw this flat spot here and yeah, I decided just to go for it and take it. You need to recognize a bit of a gift when you see it. So this seemed just perfect. I can just pull the boat up. I'll set up my tent here tonight, no problem. And like I said, it's about five o'clock. We left Lonely Island at like 6.30 this morning. And I haven't had anything to eat yet. Not really, neither is Reggie, so I was planning on going for a couple more hours. But once we saw this when we were sailing by, it's like, you know what, we should just go for it. Just take this spot while it's there instead of instead of trying to hunt down another spot. Just pulled the monarch right up on that slimy rock. She's high and dry, I can get at the gear. And I can make some dinner. That sounds good right about now. What do you think, bud? You've had a long day too, eh, pal? Yeah. Oh, Tobermory was fun. What a bustling little place that is in the summer. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's amazing. There's so much going on. There's just so many people around, tourists looking at boats. And some a kayakers just out along the shoreline. So actually, we haven't made too much ground since my flower pot video because the island in the middle out there is Flower Pot Island and that's Bear Rump Island. And yeah, we were making really good time. I could have really been at Cabot Head tonight, but I think it was time to pull ashore, take a break. And I bought a six pack of Moosehead Tall Boys, so. I'll put those to work right away. Oh, what a beautiful, amazing spot though. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's it, Reggie. You're in the picture of the flowers. I still can't believe what a great boat this Monarch canoe is. <laughs> Look at it. It's like totally loaded up with gear. Crap everywhere. Got like a sailing rig made out of a couple beaver sticks and a ground tarp. And a 
we've got her pulled up high and dry on the Bruce Peninsula. And it just does it all. It's amazing. It just, just handles everything. I put a bit of extra weight in it today just because I picked up some groceries and cans of stew and cans of beans, cans of beer. Just the best all-around boat, or paddle boat anyway, that there is. I've taken it places that you'd never take a kayak. Portages in the lakes and swamps. I've taken it places that you'd never take a canoe. Out in the big water and the rough waves. Yeah, it's just an amazing boat. I don't see why they're not more popular. I've also got an amazing dog here. I've taken him everywhere, all over the place. Yeah, buddy, on lots of canoe trips and little journeys, camping. <laughs> and he just keeps on going. <laughs> hey, buddy. You look like a dick on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. oh, I thought you were going to be nicer than that. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> going to set up my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag right in this little cavern here. A nice big overhang. There's a little, nice little flat spot there. It is Monday, July 9th, about 7 a.m. We got up about half an hour ago, and we spent the night here at Smoky Head White Pine Bluff. So yeah, we were paddling along, looking for a campsite. <clears throat> Noticed a little fire pit in the log. Usually that's a good sign that there's something close by. Up here there is a little campsite. So yeah, once again, found a good little spot to sleep. It's not as not as difficult as you might think, actually. If you know what to look for. Oh, yesterday was pretty long. It was, well, it was like 12 hours. We were left outside of Tobermory about 7 a.m. Got here about 7 p.m. I stopped at a point for a couple hours just to try and let the wind die down because we were trying to cut across a place called Dyer's Bay. And man, as the wind was just howling, it had to be a steady 60, 70 kilometers an hour. The waves weren't big, but the wind was relentless. So I took a little break, just waited to see if it would die down, and it didn't, so. And we just kept pushing on and pushing on. Oh, well, we're here on Griffith Island. Um, yeah, it's around three o'clock. We haven't gone too far today. We left Smoky Head around 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Got here around 2.30. This whole island is basically a private hunt camp. Um, and I'm sure in the summer families use it as just vacation property. The Griffith Lighthouse is just around the corner. So I was going to go there, but there was a nice spot to sit in the shade and the breeze to keep the flies away that I just dragged up right here and just sat here and just looking at some maps, trying to figure out the next step. Like I said, we haven't gone too far today. There's a nice little spot just up over my shoulder here that would Hold the two-man tent just perfectly. And yeah, we could easily hit and run and be gone first thing in the morning. 
This should be our last campsite of the trip. We are on Giant's Tomb. We got here about 8 last night after leaving Griffith Island around 6 a.m. For the most part, we crossed Georgian Bay, basically. I think there's about 73 kilometers to get here. For the first few hours of the trip, now the conditions were good, just a nice little swell. Then the next five or six hours, the winds really kicked up and the waves kicked up and there was good, like, probably six foot or two meter waves most of the time. Not real breaking, crashing waves or anything, but just good sized waves with a few, a few breaking waves thrown in. And the occasional set of rollers would come through, probably about eight feet tall or so. So that kept us on our toes all day. It was a bit of a, a bit of an exhausting paddle that way, always having to look around and make sure you knew what was coming. And trying to predict when the waves were going to break, if you could broach them or not. And, but it was a fun paddle. And we made it through no problem. Took on a bit of water a couple times, but yeah, nothing major. This is probably our last night out. We're going to head up to Go Home Lake today and go home river and take the musk link up with the musquash river there's a few portages along the way and then hopefully we'll be in battle this afternoon unless there's some impassable object on the musquash river but we didn't come this far to get turned back and find another route that's for sure